Hi everybody, this is Steve Brzezetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are in part two of our eight-part basic training for Adobe Premiere Elements. And here in part two, we're in expert view, which is where we're going to spend most of our time as we edit video and as we look at how to use the program basically. And in part two, I just want to show you how to set up or start a project. Now, for the most part, the program does the setup for you automatically. All you need to do is add the media to the timeline and the program will base its project settings on the first media clip you add to your timeline. There's some new features since version 2022, though, for custom creating your project. And we'll take a look at those in just a moment. To add media to your project, all you need to do is go over here to the upper left hand corner and select add media. Now there are a number of features here for adding the media. For instance, if you've got video on a camcorder and the camcorder is connected to your computer by a USB, you can simply select get video from your camcorder or device. If you're getting photos from a still camera, you can use this tool. There are other tools here for getting from devices, but for the most part, if your media is already on your hard drive and ultimately all media must be on your hard drive, the easiest way to get it is to simply go to add media from files and folders. And when you select that, you simply browse and you can add media to your project either by selecting one clip or holding down the shift key and selecting the first and last in a series or holding down the control key on a PC or the command key on a Mac and adding your clips one at a time. Click OK and they're added to your project. Now, when we were working in quick view, the media was added directly to your timeline here in expert view. It's more like a traditional video editor, in which case you gather your media here into project assets first, and then you add them to your timeline. Now, when I add a clip to my timeline, the program will automatically set up the project to match the specs of that very first clip and I'm good to go here. So for instance, this particular clip is 1920 by 1080 with 30 frames per second drop frame. And if I go to edit project settings general, I can see that my project has automatically been set up to match the specs of that video clip. That makes it nice and easy to just build out your project because the program is digesting your video clips based on those project specs. But what if you've got a need for a custom video project or custom aspect ratio? Well, new since version 2022, there are features here for creating a custom project. And let me show you what I mean. If you go up here to file, new, and new project, we'll just select no, we don't need to save this current one. The program now offers a detailed new project screen and here you can only choose the name of your project and the location you're going to save your project file, but you can choose your aspect ratio. Now here under project presets landscape are the more traditional project settings. These are based on say for instance camcorder video, high definition, ultra high definition 4K or all the way down to standard definition video. And you can manually set up your project settings based on that. But in order to meet the needs of uh, modern social media, there are also other project presets here. So for instance, if you shoot your video with your phone held upright, you're getting a portrait picture. You're getting a video that is taller than it is wide. And there are some project settings here for that video. If you're creating video for a number of social media sites, you want it to be square, more square than landscape. And there are some options here too, starting with 4K to high def to standard definition. And then finally, if you just want to base your video project settings on the social media site you're going to send your video to, well, there are options here under the social drop down menu. And here you have the choice for setting it up we're going to use it as a Facebook post, Facebook story, Instagram post, Pinterest pin, Vimeo, and YouTube. And whichever you select here, the program then will automatically set up your project at an aspect ratio that's designed to fit that particular website. Once you select your project setting, before you close this window, before you click OK, make sure that you check the box here to force the project settings on your project. This will lock these settings in because as we said, the program by default will change its project settings based on the very first clip you add to the timeline. You want to override that if you're going to set up your custom settings here. Click OK. And now when we add media to our timeline, the program will maintain the aspect ratio of the project settings we selected 
and the program will not change project settings to match the video clip. So whether you want the program to set up automatically or whether you want to create a custom size for your video, you have options for both of those. Once you got your project set up, we can begin the process of adding our media and building out our movie. And that's what we're going to do in part three of our eight part basic training with Adobe Premiere Elements. Hope you'll stay with me for the whole series. I'm Steve Rizzetti. We'll see you soon.